In this video I show you how to get started with Gutenberg Editor. I explain what are blocks and how the Gutenberg 5.9 interface works inside WordPress. So without any further ado, let's get started. Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you don't know me, I am Natalie from Sites with Natalie. In this channel, I talk about all things related to WordPress websites. Let's dive in. One of the most frequent questions I've been asked about is, do I need to use a particular theme for the new editor? No, the block editor will work with all themes. However, only some themes might support specific layout features, like wide and full width content. So I, I went ahead and I have installed the new default 5.9 WordPress theme, so I can show you how to use the WordPress block editor interface. I want to clarify one important thing for you. Some people associate the new WordPress Gutenberg block editor with a plugin called Gutenberg from the WordPress repository. The Gutenberg plugin contains all features that they are working on with Gutenberg. So, the work has not finished and it's a beta plugin allowing to test the features. So, I don't recommend to use the plugin on a launch and active site unless you are very comfortable with the code side of WordPress. I like to think of this new editor as a species of content somewhat similar to Lego bricks, where you can create anything you want and move around and interact with. You use the Gutenberg Blogs editor on posts and pages. I got these three posts already published. Let's edit one of them in the WordPress editor. This is the Gutenberg interface. It consists of three big parts, the left sidebar, the block content area in the middle, and the block settings sidebar. At the moment, you are in the default full screen mode. That's why you don't view the left sidebar with all of your WordPress admin menus. You can easily switch off to the full screen mode to restore it. Click on the three dots link at the top right corner. You see that the full screen mode is enabled. Now just click on that to uncheck. That's an easy way to restore the WordPress default dashboard. The spotlight mode view is another feature you need to decide on. These are for those who want to focus on one block of content at a time. If we enable the top toolbar, instead, you access all the block settings and tools at the top. So, in a single place, with the spotlight mode view, you access each block setting at a time. That's the main difference. This is a personal preference you need to decide on. You can choose the editor you want to work with Visual Editor or with the Code Editor if you have coding skills. The Manage Reusable Blocks, if you click on that, WordPress shows you a list of all of your reusable blocks. You are able to import a JSON file from your computer and even add a new reusable block you build up in Gutenberg. Let's try out the copy all content option. Let's go ahead and I... This is immensely helpful, for instance, if you want to duplicate a post or a page. You don't need to have extra plugin at all. I want to copy this hello world blog post and let's paste inside the blog post I was working on. I enter Ctrl V or Command V if you are on a Mac and there it is. The other menu you need to pay attention to is this one, the cog icon. Whenever you click on that, you get these new tabs, post and block. The block tab is where are all the block settings just for that specific block. So if I select this paragraph, I get these properties here. Color, typography, size, advanced. You can easily change every property, for instance, the background color. If you click on the plus icon next to the typography section, you can have extra options such as the line height, the letter spacing and the letter case. You get the font size. Under the appearance section you can style further the text and put in some margin space in all sizes or in some size by clicking on the link button. 
with more advanced units like ramps, amps or percentage. Use tab shows all the post settings as a whole. Things such as status, the templates, the permalink, which is the friendly where all slug, categories, tags and the feature image and so on. The top cog can be toggled on and off. Just click on top of the icon to toggle on and off. When you toggle off, you get the full screen editor. On the left upper corner, we have the WordPress logo. If you click on that, it takes you back to your WordPress dashboard. Each block consists of a block toolbar, a block setting sidebar and the block content. The block toolbar contains high-level controls for the selected block. The first icon allows users to transform a, a block into another type of compatible block. The second icon represents the action to drag the block up or down. The third one is the ability to move up and down. The fourth icon is to change the paragraph alignment to white width and the full width. The next one is to change the heading level. The two next ones are to bold and italic the text. Just highlight with your mouth. The next one is to add a link to make it clickable. Note that an ANC selected block does not show the block toolbar or any other controls. To remove a block, select the block and click the three dots right above it. Among the multiple settings there, you will see the option to remove the block. If for any reason you change your mind about the deleted block, press the undo button at the top toolbar menu. In the top left corner you have the block insert turn button. If you open up the blocks group, you easily realize that they are organized by the category groups. So we have a text group. This means all of these blocks are related to text blocks and they share some common properties. Down below we have a media group. This contains a set of blocks relating to media blocks, such as image, gallery, cover and that sort of blocks. Then we have the design blocks, allowing you to design your posts wherever you want. Any web page contains elements arranging rows and columns, so they make part of this group. The widgets group. You can add additional features and functionalities into your posts and pages by adding widgets. And then the theme blocks group. In other words, are the blocks there likely hard to be used in the full site editor when enabled. For instance, you may you must design a header section. You may use the site logo and the site tagline if you want to. That sort of blocks. The last block group is embed. You can embed this sort of blocks like a Twitter post, a YouTube video, a SoundCloud file. There are a lot of options. If you know the block's name, all you have to do is to start typing. If I type in bottom, for instance, then and then I click, the block is added to the content area. The second way to add content is by copy and paste any text and image files from Google Doc. For anyone who doesn't write directly on the WordPress editor, this feature will make you fall in love with Gutenberg. The Gutenberg editor lets you directly copy and paste content from Google Docs to WordPress, including images. So I got this Google Docs report doc. It consists of text and image. I select it all by pressing from your keyboard Ctrl A or Command A if you are on a Mac and then Ctrl C to copy all the content. Then I paste into the blog post with the Ctrl V command. There's no need for formatting, everything is pasted inside the Gutenberg editor and now you easily can customize it wherever you want. This also works with Microsoft Word. Third way to have a new block, I move my high mouse into these two blocks. It opens up this plus icon. I had a paragraph. It opens up a new block. By default, WordPress has a paragraph block. As you can view from the list view, the paragraph block has been added. Another great way to add a block is by clicking on the plus icon at the end of a line or a row. This is just a pop-up viewer where you can search for any or browse all. If you click on the browse all option, it opens up the left sidebar with the blocks directory. 
What if you want to add a block in between two blocks? I have two paragraphs blocks. If I move my mouse down, you will see we get the little plus icon to add a block. Click on that and it opens up the pop-up block viewer again. Now you can do a search by name or browse all and insert it in that specific place. What if you want to insert a block before or after an existing block? Let's create an example. From the list view, select the heading. This is an easy way to select blocks. You can also select blocks with this button. From the top toolbar menu, click on the tools icon. You've got two options, edit and select. I select the select option. And now move your mouse over the same heading. Close the list view. As you can see, it has been selected. I go into select mode. I select the heading and let's check the list view. In the edit mode you can insert before or after. From the left sidebar you get the same menu options. Insert before or after. As a productivity tip here, another way to insert a block. Press the enter key and then just type in the slash forward command chart whenever you know the block type. Type in slash forward command and start typing the name of the block. Now let's talk about how to delete blocks. Essentially, you just need to select the desired block you want to delete and then go to the three lines dot. At the bottom, there is an option to remove the block. The other way to delete a block is by, by going to the list view sidebar. The menu is identical. Select the block you, you need to delete and then from the three line dots, you will find the option to delete it. Gutenberg block system helps you to create content in a more visual way than the previous editor. It provides a library of the pre-built elements or blocks. Each block can be added to a page or a post and be customized. The style and appearance of the block elements are determined by the theme you are using. Actually, the theme you install and activate on WordPress dictates and controls the style and appearance of the block's elements. I mouse over to this heading block. You can change here the item justification to the right, left, center and space in between when you have more elements on the same row. For instance, to the right sidebar you can easily change the background and the text colors. That is to say the theme has these five colors as the default theme colors. So to override the theme colors and settings for the whole block and customize at our own terms, you have two possible options options by using the float menu, menu toolbar of the block and by using the right sidebar block settings. So use these two menus in order to customize any block in terms of appearance from the default theme settings. I also want to point out to you that for instance this gallery block is the parent block. It means the options to customize are different from the images blocks below since they are the children blocks. If I I select the parent block I get these menu items while if I select the children button block the menu toolbar is quite different from the parent block. What do I mean by nested blocks? The parent is the container within which my images are placed in. So it's no surprise to me that its settings have to do mainly with the wide and the full width. The second blocks are the nested blocks or the child blocks. If you click on the first floating item, it will jump right to the parent block. So this is something not to be overlooked when customizing the content. If you select the top toolbar view mode instead of the spotlight mode, you don't get that extra feature to jump straight right to the parent block. In that case, you just need to select from the list view the block you need to edit and customize. Blocks share some properties in common. They are located under the three lines dot. Basically, are the settings to copy, duplicate, insert before and after a block element and move to edit as HTML, add to reusable blocks and to group and to remove. Let me show you how the move option works. It helps you when you want to move the block from nested blocks. The cursor turns into a drop area, the blue line, so you can move and pick where you want to drop the block. I'm pressing the 
tappy to navigate to the place I want to drop my block in. Just pressing the enter key concludes the operation. If you decide not to move the block at all, pressing the escape button takes you back to wherever you were before. You can move and place blocks from the list view. From the editor's list view, you can manage long documents with many blocks. Users can drag and drop blocks from within the list view in order to organize content. However, users are not merely limited to moving things around within the list view itself. They can drag blocks from the list over into the content canvas and vice versa. Block patterns are pre-designed elements that are made up blocks. You can look up for specific block patterns from this drop-down list. They are categorized into groups to complement the team designs. So, when I insert this block pattern, everything is placed inside my canvas. They are pre-designed elements for the users. Block patterns come with a theme you install and activate on your WordPress site. If we click the Explore button, you can preview all of the pre-block patterns. If you click on one, it will immediately be inserted on the canvas. As you can see, each of the block patterns is made up of a column, a heading, paragraph, separator, a list, and a button. Of course, you can edit and customize as you like just like the default blocks that come with the team. They are only blocks. So, take advantage of these block patterns to design your website in a much quicker way. WordPress has a block pattern directory repository. You can use this menu to filter and get your block patterns into clicks. Let's say I like this design layout. I click on the copy button. Go back to your website and paste inside the canvas. Press the end Turkey, and then I'm pressing the Ctrl V command from my keyboard. You can see the pattern has been pasted directly into the WordPress editor canvas. You customize as you wish, even for setting the padding. So, this is an easy way to import block patterns. This is not yet a large resource, but over time the directory will surely expand. Reusable block allows you to save a block or a group of blocks which you can later use in any post or page on your site. If you are often adding the same content to the same block or using the reusable block will save you time and effort. Let's create one and about the author section to avoid having to head over and over again the same content every time. So I insert a one column block and then I search for the media block. Block. This is a combination of a text and an image blocks. I have uploaded my image from my media library and to the right column I have inserted some dummy text. Reduce the font size to 1. I also have changed the vertical alignment from the menu toolbar to middle aligned. I selected the main column by pressing on the first menu toolbar icon. From the three list dot I have selected the add to reusable block. Give it a name. Now let's insert this block into, into other post. I open a blog post, then I insert it from the reusable block section. Now every time I want to add this section, I do it much more quicker. If you make change in one instance by going back to the first instance, I can easily realize the change is applied everywhere. I tweak some property settings like the image size, the background color, as an example. Let's check now if these changes has been applied. You can see the changes have been applied to the whole to the section. As you want to only make a change to the block on that specific blog post, you must convert first the block into a regular block. Click on the three dots line and then select the option. Now my two reusable blocks have different design settings. Found this video informative, subscribe to the channel or leave a big thumbs up. If you do so, you are helping the channel to spread this knowledge. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.